Hello again, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk about thick walled pressure vessels. Now I've been getting some questions about this. Before we talk about the expressions for a thick walled pressure vessel, let's talk about the difference between the, 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 a thin wall and a thick wall pressure vessel. Now the thin wall pressure vessel is something we're all kind of familiar with, I think, and I'll show you why here in a second. Let's say we've got a, a cylindrical pressure vessel with a I don't know, maybe a hemispherical end cap right there. Let's, let's look at that. And we've got a wall here that's, that's thin compared to the diameter. Okay, The thickness, we'll call T, and the mean diameter. Now, mean diameter means it's the, it's the average of the outside and the inside diameter. I'll call that D sub M. Okay, If D sub M is sufficiently large compared to T, then we can call this a thin wall. And the rule of thumb is that if DM over t is greater than or equal to 20, okay, and this is kind of a, an empirical number, that's not a hard boundary, then what you have is a thin wall pressure vessel. Okay, well what's so important about a thin wall pressure vessel? What's, first, first of all, what do they look like? I bet I've got an example here that everybody knows about. This is a pop can, or soda can, depending where you are in the US. This is my caffeine-free Diet Coke, kind of the elixir of life here. This has very thin walls compared to the diameter. All right? Now, it's pressurized. That's one of the reasons it's so strong. In fact, without the pressurization, it's very weak. Right? So it's clearly under pressure on the inside. If you've ever played with one of these, you might have torn it and found out how easy it is to tear. If you've uh, ever been a little kid or maybe want to uh, get in touch with your inner kid, you can shake one of these up on a hot, sunny day and maybe drop it or throw against something and you'll watch it uh, rupture and all the liquid comes spraying out. Um, makes kind of a mess, so do it outside. Um, but that's clearly a thin wall pressure vessel. The reason we want to assume thin wall pressure vessels whenever we can is the math is easy. We assume that the stress through the thickness is constant. It doesn't change with the thickness, doesn't change with where you are uh, through the depth. And that makes the expressions defining the stresses in the thin wall pressure vessel a lot simpler. Okay. Well, it's nice, but not all pressure vessels are thin wall. There are thick wall pressure vessels, and they aren't that uncommon either. You might think of something like a uh, hydraulic cylinder might be a thick walled pressure vessel. Um, if you think of the pressure coming from the outside, sometimes deep sea submersibles have very thick walls. Those might be a thick wall pressure vessel, although with the pressure on the outside rather than the inside. Um, this, let's take a look at what this is, uh, some terminology here. Okay, there's the inside. That distance right there, I'm going to call the inner radius. Okay, that is RO. That's going to be the outer radius for the thick wall pressure vessel. Okay, now the wall thickness can be anything with respect to R0 and R1. The it doesn't matter if the wall thickness is equal to the inner diameter. That happens. Look at high pressure hydraulic lines. Those are thick wall pressure vessels. Now I want to write the expressions up here, but it takes a minute. What I really need is I really need a blackboard ferry. Well, well, there you go, the blackboard ferry. Well, I guess the whiteboard ferry came. Anyway, so there you go. Here's the expressions for a thick-walled pressure vessel. Now, these are pretty complicated, so let's just walk through them real quick. R0 and RI, that's the inner radius. Uh, RI is the inner radius. R0 is the outer radius, or RO, I guess I should say. PI is the pressure on the inside. PO is pressure on the outside. And I think that pretty much accounts for it except for one thing, just R. R says where you are in the wall uh, measured from the center. That's the radius measured from the center. This is assumed to be in the wall somewhere. So this has to be between RI and RO. Okay? Now, notice this expression up here. Uh, I've got axial hoop and radial directions. Maybe I should go over that. Here's what the, the pressure vessel looks like in cross-section. Here's where it looks like from the side. So there's, we live in three-dimensional space, right? At least I do. I assume you do. So there must be stress in three different directions. Well, the first direction we're going to look at is axial, along the center line of the uh, cylinder. The next direction is radial. Okay, That's out from the center of the, uh, the center, center line of the pressure vessel. And the last one is hoop, or sometimes they call this circumferential. But this is the equivalent of hoop stress in a thin wall pressure vessel. There are three different expressions. So there's for axial stress, hoop stress, and radial stress. All right, first thing to notice here is for axial, R doesn't show up in there. That R with no subscript, 
because this is a variable. This gets to be whatever you want. This is your, you're looking wherever you want to along the thickness of the uh, pressure vessel, uh, the thickness of the wall. That appears in these two expressions. doesn't appear here. That's because stress this direction doesn't vary through the thickness of the pressure vessel. It's actually, this one actually is constant through the thickness of the wall. These two vary as you, go, as you go through the wall. These really are a function of where you are on the wall. The other part to note here is when you figure, uh, uh, run numbers through this, the radial direction, the pressure, or I'm sorry, the stress in the radial direction equals the pressure. If it doesn't, something's wrong. That's the thing to check. So on the inside, let's say you've got, I've got my example here I'll write up in a minute. Say the inside pressure is uh, 50 megapascals. Okay, that means that the stress right there on the inside wall is going to be 50 megapascals. And it's going to be compressive, so it's going to be negative. Also, stress on the outside in the radial direction has to equal the outside pressure. So if I've got uh, zero pressure on the outside, and I'm saying zero gauge pressure here, I'll have zero stress in the radial direction on the outside. Those are good checks to use to make sure that your calculations are going correctly. Now, I'm not going to try to work through all this by hand. I will write up some numbers here for, to use for you to, for you to use to check. Let's say that Ri is 100 millimeters, and Ro is 150 millimeters. Okay, so already I know what the mean diameter is and I know what the thickness is. The thickness is just one minus the other, so the thickness is 50 millimeters. And if you'll work this out, the mean diameter is 250 millimeters. So what that means I've got now is I've got a pressure vessel where the ratio of diameter, mean diameter to thickness is 5. So that's clearly not a thin wall pressure vessel. This is clearly thick wall. So I've got that. And if you work through all these numbers, what you'll find out is that sigma A, which is stress in the axial direction along the axis of the pressure vessel, is 40 megapascals. That stress in the, and I'll get my, myself out of your way here in a second, hoop stress is 130 megapascals. Well, I've got to make sure I'm staying in frame here, just barely. OK, I guess I'll put this over here then. And sigma r, stress in the radial direction. Now, stress in the radial direction where? I've also set r equals, let me make sure I did this right, r equals 100 millimeters. OK, so I'm looking at the inside wall here, just to make sure we're clear on that. And sigma r is, it better be, minus 50 megapascals, and it is. So there's one, two, three. Hope this helps. Thin wall and thick wall pressure vessels behave differently. And the big key to the, is that with a thick wall pressure vessel, stresses in the uh, radial and the hoop directions vary through the thickness. That's the, thin, the thing that differentiates thin wall and thick wall pressure vessels. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.